Hello, my name is Trider. Welcome to part two of the Roman Cathedral tutorial. Let's pick up right where we left off. So last time we had almost finished the foundation. I think we got as far as the first two levels of the stereo bait, and now we are going to add the last level up here, the third block here, which is of course the stylo bait level. And that is also going to be the level where we can put in our nice glass floor that we can have inside our cathedral, not only to prevent mobs from spawning, but also because it looks really cool if you're using shaders, but even if you're not, it still looks cool. So let's get a bird's eye view of what we've got going on here. So if you remember, the building is arranged, uh, it's symmetrical around two axes, so we have uh, four quarters, so we'll be taking a look at one quarter over there, I will count all of those blocks out for you so we can get uh, make sure that the foundation is accurate. Uh, I've also got this over here as well without the glass. Just want to give you a good uh, top-down view of this level here and this level here, and then we will land and start counting out blocks. There we go. Uh, you can see around the edges here, you're filling in with uh, mostly cobble. Back here, you're just cutting in one block all around the sides here, like so. Like there, there's a bit of detail here for this plinth that's going to be holding one of the statues. Right there. And uh, that's identical to this one back here. The front one is just a little bit different. We've got some upside down cobblestone stairs all the way around the square, right there. And at the front here, we of course have our third flight of cobblestone stairs. All right, so let's just start right here at the doorway. Uh, so I just have a little bit of a diorite marked down here. I think you're gonna need to place this for the bottom of the door frame. Uh, but inside of that, I think all we are using is uh, mostly going to be chiseled quartz and also some, some pillar quartz in a couple of places by the door frames here. Uh, but let's start over here on our center line. It would be right there, so if we want to start here, that'll be uh, one block on the center line, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, sixteen blocks for that dimension. On the interior, we have a couple of column bases. All the column bases in, in this building are the same. Just a cross of um, chiseled uh, cobblestone, ch uh, no, ch chiseled quartz. I don't think chiseled cobblestone exists. That'd be fun to see, though. Uh, but but anyway, we have the um, columns here, three of those. The entry collimation distance is, of course, two blocks right there, like so. And in our corner here, we want to turn the corner and go for one, two, three, four blocks. We have uh, chis uh, not chiseled. We have the the pillar quartz blocks here, right there, and then turn the corner and count for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks. Turn the corner again. Three more blocks there, and with, then we have a really long run of what one, two, three. I think I count uh, 24 there. You could probably, I don't think you're going to need that one, but uh, you can put it in anyway. And then turning the corner from there, we count for one, two, three, four, five, ten. And of course, uh, remember the, uh, the block you be, will be placing is already pre placed, it's directly below these blocks. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Then a diagonal of two. Straight run of four. A diagonal of two. One there. Two. One. One here. There and here. And then a really long straight run of uh, well, somewhere around here. This is going to be the center line. So let's uh, let's mark that out. Right there, and that's going to be a run of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten right on the center line. And you just want to carry that across and do the entire pattern 
that we did over here. So I'll show you all this here at a glance. And on the interior here, directly two blocks across from this little passageway here, broke some glass, um, going to be five blocks there, four, then two, a diagonal of two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four right there. And I think uh, you could probably get away with not having that one. All right, and of course, uh, these here, these are the main piers that our four arches sit on to support the dome and pretty much the entire structure. So they're, they're very important. That's why they're extra thick over here. Uh, here at the front, to place the rest of these columns, we have an intercolumnation distance. That is, the, column, the distance the columns are apart from each other. It's going to be five blocks. And then place another column base. Skip two, another column base, two, and another column base to make six there. And back here, you want to make uh, columns just within one block of the wall, but spaced out two blocks from each other. You want to make one, two, three, four, and five of those here. And this one is going to be back against the wall. So I think, if memory serves, uh, this, this wall actually occurs in like that. I made a change back here. So you probably don't need don't need those blocks back there, but you need to make the corner like that. So over here we have one more column base there. And here for our um for our uh, hemispherical apses on the sides here, the the three of those that we saw on the half domes, we have uh, these columns here. So just from the edge here, you want to count out three blocks there. You can place one of those. And then two blocks that way and one block that way. You can place this one. And then two blocks there for this one. That one right there. Let me let me go back and uh, attach that so it could be a little bit more clear. Like so. You want to make sure you get all of these placed correctly. Okay, remove those. We no longer need that. So over here we have another pier holding up uh, part of the half dome. So from this point here, skip two blocks, then place one in diagonal and another one, then two, one, two, two again, and then four. Right there for that, for the base of one of those piers. All right, uh, back here, we can see along the center line, we have this column back here. From this point, it's two blocks away from there. And then if you want to take a measurement from here and count out um, six blocks, that will give you where to place these additional column bases. All right, once you have placed those, the good news is, remember, you can follow the guide of what you've already built over there. You want to mirror that on the other side of the center line over here. And then mirror all of that again on that side of the uh, main center line over there. And I imagine you're going to place the quartz first over your floor pattern and, and uh, everything. So once you have done that, you can go in and just cover the entire floor in a sheet of light blue stained glass. Uh, or conversely, if you would like a different color of stained glass, you uh, can make a change there. Do feel free to substitute my material choices for things that you might prefer a little bit better. Uh, here it is with, uh, without the glass on it. All right, uh, with all that out of the way, I think we can now go on to the next phase. So we are going up one more block, and uh, the good news is the interior here, you want to go around and extend up the quartz by one block for the foundation that you just made. Now it'll be really easy to see, it's just poking up through the glass there, like so. 
all the blocks should be exactly the same. Just, uh, just slap another layer of quartz on top of that. Uh, like so there. The only changes are on the outside now we are doing the column bases for, uh, well it's at a render range now, but the, the column bases for all the the 2x2 two two, uh, order columns on the outside. Uh, first let's go here and take a look at the statue base. It's real easy. We just got a simple simple pattern diorite like so. Right there. And over here for this one, slightly different design. Uh, diorite and cobbled there for that. Alright, so now the columns for the building are going to be as follows. I think you can see the column bases here. They are going to be, uh, what is that? Um, it's not eight, it's like twelve. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's some amount of stone bricks. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It, it's twelve, twelve stone bricks. And each one of these is going to be the same. So these are footprints for columns that we're going to be building. And the intercolumnation distance for these is going to be one, two, three blocks apart. And you want to build another column base. You 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 should be using these um, uh, the foundation that you built over here. If you've constructed this correctly, like you see, you can use this as a guide to site this first column. Once you've done that, skip over three blocks and build another one. Three blocks, a, a third one. Three blocks and then a fourth one. And that should bring you directly to the other side over here. Uh, if, if it didn't do that, then you made a mistake somewhere in your counting, so you want to pause and go back over that. Uh, the same deal holds true for the columns at the front. You can use this as a guide right here and then skip three blocks and another column, three blocks and another column, and three blocks here, and uh, here is actually actually our center line. Right there. So you can see you're building six column bases there along the front. And of course you're doing the, the same thing over there for the other four. On that side and for the back as well, the same. Uh, over here, though, we do have an, an, an additional column. I can spit my words out. Back here, we want to have three, and then another column base. And you can see we've got one one block of space here, and then three blocks of space here, and here again because we have an attached uh, plaster. Um, to the walls here. Of course, a, a plaster is an attached uh, column. And it's going to it's going to have the same design except it's going to be uh, objectively less to build. You can use back here for the quartz what you've already done as a guide. Uh, behind that you want to have just some cobblestone filler, but in front of that you want to have uh, stone bricks like you see done here. So, from this corner here, this is going to be like a, a column base right there just like these here. You want to skip three blocks and then build another one. There, skip three blocks and build another one here. And so on and so forth, all the way across the face of the building until you get to your entrance here along the center line. Uh, where you want to stop right there. And then leave that open and then build the entire thing again across on the uh, the other side over there. Here at the corner you want to do exactly the same thing. You want to skip three blocks and then build a column base. Three blocks and, a, excuse me, a plaster base. Uh, but then you want to skip only one block right here and build another one there. But then you're back to three and another one. Three again and another one there. And uh, that is because uh, right here that is of course our, our uh, other center line along the long axis of the building there. You can also see here the co these co uh, columns on the side here. They follow the same rules as the one at the front. You want to be a four right there three blocks away from the uh, foundation of the building there. 
And let me get a little altitude and give you a bird's eye view of the entire sequence right here. So except for that place where we have uh, just right over there where we only skip one block, uh, the rule for the rest of the building is you want to skip three. All right, now let us go on to the next phase. So from here on out, we have been going only one slice at a time. That is, I want to go slow to get the foundation started. But now for the rest of the building, except there's like, there's like halfway, there's like a place where I made a mistake and I only sliced it once. Actually, there may be two places like that. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, for the rest of the tutorial, we are going to be going up in increments of two blocks. Um, because you can see, like, back here, th this block right here corresponds exactly to, uh, to that block level there, and we are now going to go up two blocks from here on out. So, column bases. Uh, you want to go around and put cobblestone on top of that stone bricks that you did before. Remove that there. Put cobble there, and if you want to save a little material, you could probably leave, uh, leave that hollow, I think. And then on top of that, you want to put uh, stone brick stairs right side up. Eight of those around uh, the column base there. And uh, that is going to be a rule for all the columns. You can see all the other columns, they have exactly the same base. So all the ones you did across the front here do exactly the same. And the ones also attached to the wall follow the same rule, except we want to have the base wrap around with the stone bricks like you see done there. You just want to wrap those around every time they hit the wall. On the last phase you can just extend that up with an entire layer of cobble all the way around uh, but then you want to use uh, nothing but stone bricks here to get that in uh, like so. Alright, uh, these are still the same, they're just, they're just being extended up like that there. And the die right here at the front for that one. Uh, now let's go inside. Uh, so, um, talk about the column bases in here. So, the column bases for these, you already did, um, you already did this level here. So we are looking at uh, these quartz stairs here, four of those. And then put a block of die right right there, or just whatever material you want to use for your columns. If you want to use something a little bit more adventurous, then, um, then uh, die right for that. Actually, I think in the, the, in the reference model, it's, um, not, it's not polished die right, it's, uh, it's calcite. I think uh, I don't have my texture pack on at the moment for that, so it, it's all the old materials here. Uh, but the outline of the shapes here, I left that off so maybe you could see a little bit better. But these should ideally be calcite if you want to follow my design. And uh, once you have done one of those, you want to, on every column base, you want to build that up without exception on all of the columns here. And of course, my torch placement here is just suggestive. Um, if you're doing this in survival, you will, of course, need uh, many more torches than what I have prescribed here. Right there, let's go back and look at the pattern on the walls. So we are using a bit of, uh, um, uh, I really like the old uh, nether quartz uh, texture, uh, uh, but uh, if you want to alter the pattern on the walls, you can. Uh, it, like if you don't want to get all the um, obsidian, you can use perhaps some uh, polished blackstone instead, or maybe some of that, um, that gold infused blackstone or something. I'll leave that up to you. You want to make a change here, but I'm going to show you the pattern that I made for the walls. We're just going to scroll down the walls here, like so. Most of it's uh, quartz and obsidian. There's just a little bit of uh, calcite here and there. In the corridors, though, we have uh, some um, uh, dark prismarine. If you want something else in the hallway, that's fine. I think one of those blocks is... Yeah, okay, that one, 
Th that one should be like this. Small mistake. It's easy to misplace those. All right, turning the corner here, taking a look at the walls. Very slowly around here. Here's the corner details. Turning the corner again over here for this wall. And details here for the staircase. You remember the staircases that I showed you for these, these second level access. Well, that's what we are building here. We just have some a little bit of uh, quartz ore poking out right there. Of course, the staircases are all quartz. Like so. Turning the corner again on that other wall. Or the staircase and back over here the uh, the far wall and I think uh, I think right here is our center line so that is the interior for that part now over here let's uh, let's go back and take a look at the uh, wall decoration for the piers we've got a little bit of gold ore that we're using here it's another thing I, I like the older texture on as opposed to the, the newer one. Uh, but if you want to uh, make a material substitution, as I said, do feel free to change that. All right, and let's go look at the other, other smaller pier over here. Ideally, there shouldn't be any place inside of the building where you see things like exposed cobble and stone bricks. That is just for the outside. Uh, all right, I think that's uh, covered in enough detail for you. So here is bird's eye view of all of that. And we will go on to the next phase. All right, uh, column uh, base details. For the uh, compound Corinthian order, we have, of course, upside down cobblestone stairs, then right side up again, like so, on all four sides, like that. And, of course, all the columns, you want to do the same design without exception. Like you see, I just extend that up two more blocks. Uh, now, here, let's um, start over on the side. Let's take a look at that real quick. And the columns over here are just the same. Uh, now we need to talk about the exterior window details. Take a look at this corner window. So this window here, you can see the pattern that I've used for the glass. We have a block of stained glass and then a pane and then a block. But on top of that, you want to reverse the order and go to a pane, a block, and a pane. And uh, that, that will make your windows have a more 3D characteristic to them. It's just a standard trick I do with all my windows. Makes them look more interesting. Uh, now, if you want to, uh, I would encourage you to get creative with some stained glass colors in these windows. Perhaps something not, not too garish. Maybe maybe not, you know, not, not lime and magenta stained glass or something like that. Do Try something a bit more muted, you know, like, like purples and reds, and darker blues, things like that. Maybe a touch of green here and there. Uh, but all of the window designs are going to follow exactly that same pattern. Another window here. There are no windows in this corner here, by the way. That's just straight cobble. And a little bit of upside down stone brick, uh, not stone, uh, cobblestone stairs there. But not, uh, not on the top. So there's a window there. The straight cobble there. And then window here and here. And right Right there, that's our center line. All right, that's uh, the shorter side. Let's go around to the longer one. So we've got our corner here. Then a window. Another window. Another one there. And then we have cobble here. I tried to uh, work as many windows as I could into the pattern of the building. Like so. Uh, but um, a Romanesque is it, it doesn't really lend itself to a lot of windows. It's, it's not like Gothic, where the goal of the structure is to remove as much wall and replace that with as much window as possible. 
Uh, so here for the doorway, we just have a simple dial right frame. On the other side, we just want to extend up the, the quartz pillars on the other side, uh, that right there. Uh, here, for the interior columns, you just want to extend all these up. These are going to have six blocks. Six blocks of diorite. Or, um, well, it's what? Calcite. Or whatever different block material you want to use. Perhaps you want to use maybe some lapis for that. Or maybe you're really rich and you want to use some diamond ore. That'd be really fancy. Uh, here, details for the windows. You can see on the other side, the windows are framed by the quartz pillars, like so. And I will scan around the walls here and show you the pattern for the walls. Uh, quickly here, we have this completed um, uh, section, this little hallway, which takes you between areas. Details, gold ore, and the, the small low ceilings up here. Like so. Here is the pattern for the main um, uh, area here, which holds the arches. Uh, the main piers. We got that for a moment. Details on the inside here. I think you can catch on by now that a lot of what I did on the interior is going to be a repeating pattern. So that will aid you in reconstructing it. Over here for the stairway, a couple of upside down quartz stairs there. The other wall, right there, here, and the far wall by our center line. All right, let's take a look at uh, this small pier here. Right there, and I think that is going to be all there is to cover on that phase. So we will now go up another two blocks. All right, so you have a lot of dough right to place now. You can see here for the columns on the exterior, two by two blocks of dough right. Right there on top of the column bases that we did over here. You want to go around on every one of these that we built and place that. Well, I mean, not redstone, you want to use the dowel right. Like so, the four at the front, the six along the front there, and then the four over there. All right, let's take a quick look at this uh, pedestal here. There's a little plinth holding one of the large angel statues. Like so. And the one over here as well for the smaller statue. Yeah. Like I didn't chop those off. Right there. All right, so let's take a look at, let's start at the corner and work our way along the front. You can see that repeating pattern with the window that I showed you. Like what we did down here, this is a module, so you want to build that. Just uh, one more time, stacked right on top of the first one. For all the spaces where we made the windows, and just uh, edge it out with cobble. Uh, detail here for our door frame now. We would have uh, just a lintel of diorite and then some upside down stone brick stairs there. 
course, that's our main center line right there. Let's go over here, turn the corner, and look at the short side. We've got a window over here, a bit of cobble, and two more windows. And of course, that uh, that's our other center line right there. All right, let's land in, go in the doorway. Uh, you already know to be extending these up, so I won't remark on that. Let's just show you the uh, patterns along the interior. We've got some upside down quartz here, a couple of slabs right there for that. We're going to be making a little uh, a little uh, triangular pediment thing over the doorway there. And let's just slowly go around and I will show you the pattern I chose to put on the walls. Right there. And around the windows. And we're just framing the entire thing out with quartz pillar blocks. Over here by the ascending staircase, some details for the door frame. And for the interior of the staircase. We also have a little landing right here. And then we're turning and going up and building another landing. And then we're going to be going up this way with the next set of stairs. So you want to make that, uh, make that addition to this little section here. It's very it's very tightly fit as you can see there's uh, not a block to spare. Right there. And let's take a look at the rest of the wall and here's our center line. So that's the entire sequence. Well there's this uh, this section. There we go. A lot of block placing, but uh, not, not a difficult phase. Not until we get to the dome, anyway. It's going to be one of the easier ones. All right, uh, next phase, going up two more blocks, of course. Where you placed all the last two blocks of diorite on your columns, go around and do exactly the same on the next one. Uh, over here at the front, we are finishing off our, our little sculptural plinths here. Well, not they're not so little. It's just a square of stone bricks and then a bit of uh, diorite there. Uh, you can replace uh, this diorite with perhaps uh, some gold, or if you want to, like you like you see done here, or the base of the angel statue. Uh, this would be a plinth for the Corinthian order, by the way. And over there, this is a plinth for the Doric order. Uh, even though the building is all uh, Corinthian order, I wanted to have a little, a little Doric element here and there as a, thro as a throwback. Uh, all right, you can see the design on the walls here. We'll start at our corner. Right there. We're extending the, the uh, windows up again. Two more blocks. Same deal as we did before. Right there. And over the door frame, we even have a small little hint of a window. Right there. And let's go back to the corner and then turn this way. So I can show you the sequence. It's, it's, there's no surprises over here. It's the same deal. Like you see done there. All 
All right, and now let's go back here and take a look inside the building. So uh, some details on the other side of the, the uh, main entrance doorway here. Right there. And now for all our columns, should be done placing your six blocks of whatever material you chose, uh, be it uh, calcite or diorite or something else. On top of that, we then want to start building our, our um, Corinthian capitals. And of course, to represent the acanthus leaves, we are using upside down quartz stairs. Four of those placed like so on top of every column uh, that you see done here. All right. Uh, now let's scan around the inside here from the doorway and take a look at the pattern on the wall. I think for the most part, you're extending up the same pattern that we did before in most places. And I just want to give you a quick look at this. Of course, remember as we go, uh, do feel free to pause the video and build what you see so you can build at your own pace because everyone has a different pace. More quartz and obsidian there. Turning the corner here, of course, we have this column here just attached to the wall. Like so there, another window. Over here by the stairwell. We have a few columns there. And over here. And the uh, side wall there. Uh, I think I may have omitted the, the uh, stairwell in the last phase. So let's go back over here and take a good long look at the stairwell as it looks here. We, of course, have some upside down quartz stairs there. We have our little landing right here. We turn, go up a step, another landing, and then turn for the next sequence of quartz stairs here. And I also need to show you this. All right, I think that that is pretty much everything for this phase. We're just building a lot of walls and columns so far. Nothing too challenging. Uh, over here, uh, this looks like that it's one of the places where I only sliced it once. Or one block when it should have been two. Let's, let's measure that real quick. Uh, that's four, so if I did that wrong, then this will be five. Yep. Okay, so for this phase, we're only going up one block, this block here. Uh, so you just want to plop down more, more uh, diorite on top of your columns. Over here, though, we do have the base for some statues on the sides here. Right there, a little bit of gold. You can use a cheaper material if you want to for that. As well as for this one here. Uh, let's take a look at the interior walls. So we've got some upside down stone brick stairs here. And you're continuing up the pattern with the glass. Same deal. Here is the main entrance way. Right there for that. For completeness, let's go back over here and take a look at this real quick. Same deal as we did along the front. And uh, now let's go in and take a look at the inside. Uh, so here we have, um, for the columns, we have, uh, you want to just do everything you did with the upside down quartz stairs. Uh, do it one more time. 
to fully represent the Kansas leaves for our Corinthian capitals for every column that you have built. And behind that, I will do just, just a quick scan of the wall patterns. It's mostly uh, quartz ore and obsidian. Here for the stairwell. And here along our center line right there. Let's take a look at uh, this here. Well, it's only one slice. I'll just show you that from the top down. Right there. And I think we can uh, move on along. All right, next phase, of course, more diorite for your columns. Take a look uh, at um, uh, the statues here. Uh, now, now from this point forward, the, this is the large angel statue tutorial. I have already made this statue here. So to save a bit of time in what is going to be a long series, if you want to build this statue or put something different here, please refer to the angel statue tutorial for this particular model. Uh, the ones on the side here are essentially the same statue except they are slightly smaller. So as we go, I'll try and I'll try and show you that. Uh, perhaps at the end of the video I might come I might double back on these and do a quick reverse time lapse on those. If any of you uh, along the way need extra help for that. All right, so here for over our windows, we place the last bit of glass on the last phase. And on top of that, we want to have upside down stone brick stairs. And then behind that, we want to have a couple of blocks of diorite. And then we're going to be building some uh, triangular, triangular sections with some half slabs like that there. And I found that that was actually a good place to place some uh, accent torches to help uh, light up the exterior of your building. And you want to do those uh, just in between every column, without exception, all the way till you get to the doorway, where you, of course, do another one. All right, let's go back to the edge here. Same deal, every place you can place one, except for here, because we don't have enough space. You want to place those. All right, so now we want to go on the inside here and take a look at what we've got. All right, so we are doing the foundations, or rather the, the ceiling for the first floor and the also the foundations for the second level. So I will endeavor to give you a good look at this. Uh, from the top, you can see the pattern here. We have just, for the ceiling, we have a lot, a lot of lapis and a lot of gold ore. Uh, if the lapis is too expensive for you, I would suggest that you substitute this with um, a blue terracotta. Although for my ceilings, I really like to use lapis on those. It just looks so nice up there. Uh, but we can see that we have uh, uh, quartz lintels connecting these... Uh, um, with, uh, with chiseled quartz to the walls. Like back here, every, every place you see that we have a Corinthian capital, you want to put a lintel over that going this way, and then along that way, and then of course back here along the front. Uh, now ideally, I would have liked to use some arches for this instead of just some straight lintels. Uh, but because of the scale of the of the build and you know Minecraft, um, we couldn't get away with that. So we had to resort to using some lintels here. Although these the should ideally be uh, be arches with some, with some nice uh, rib vaulting up there on the ceiling. Uh, but at this scale, this is the best we can do. There's a detail over here for the ceiling on the side. 
All right, let's go over here to the side section and take a look at this as well. Let's uh, take a look at the wall back here. And you can see it's just a simple repeating pattern. Right there, we've got our corner here that we turn. Right there, this is over here against the stairwell. Right there. Now, in some of these places, these lentils aren't going to connect exactly on top. I have put just a little hint of a large vault here with just the pattern. Like so there. I'm going to try and get this all from below, and then I'll show it to you from above in a moment. So hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. All right, so you can see we just had a straight run across here of the chiseled quartz and then a band of lapis. Then over here, you can use these, these wall patterns that we built as a guide for this. You want to come out two blocks, do a diagonal of three, and then we want to have our, our hemispherical uh, apps cutouts. Do three of those for what? That's going to be five, two, two, and five. And then two, two again, four, two, two, and five. And this here, that is going to be, of course, your center line along the, the, along the long axis of the building. So let me go back here and show you all this from the top. Right there, here is the ceiling decoration for the main entrance on this side. Here is the, the quarter of it over here by the stairwell. We'll take a look at the stairwell in a moment. Get a, a more tight end view on that. I think with the, the gold and the lapis and everything, that's high contrast enough. And you can see it without me needing to count it. Over here, the detail for this section also. Of course, once you get to the center line, it's, it's all mirrored. Uh, let's see. We need to go back and take a look at, uh, at this section here from below. So you can see how the quartz lentils are arranged. In other words, every, every place you saw cobble exposed on the top, you want to have a quartz lintel below that. Like so, right there. Alright, let's take a look at the stairwell now. We, of course, got a gold ceiling in our stairwell. Very nice stairwell. and uh, details for the walls. All right. I think that, that is going to be all there is for that phase. So let's go on and tackle another one. Uh, this one's going to be a bit more complicated. Well, it, it looks more complicated, but it's really not. Uh, but I will explain as we go. Uh, so, of course, for the exterior of the pillars, same deal. Keep uh, stacking up your die right there. Uh, for this statue here, I will just do a 360 around this. Give you a view there. It's just a very simple statue. We're not using any stairs or half slabs on that. Uh, the more statues I build, the less stairs and half slabs I tend to use. Uh, but if you want to try and tease out some more detail, uh, do feel free to do so. So over here, let's start at the corner. You can see after we finished our little pediments here for the windows, we have, of course, more window. You can see behind that there, the beginnings of the second level. Of course, uh, all, the, all the windows, they're going to be uh, a mirror of the three we built below there, not one there. And then the, uh, I think the five in the middle. 
right there. And the same is going to hold true on the other side of the building over here on this corner, right there, there, and there. All right, the, the simple is, uh, uh, the, the simple. The exterior is rather simple compared to the interior, of course. So let's go through uh, the interior here. Of course, you've got the entire first level now constructed. Um, what you want to do now is you want to have a cornice of upside down quartz stairs wrapped on top of this here, on top of your lapis. You want to have upside down quartz stairs as a cornice being wrapped around right here. And there you don't you want to just follow the lapis that we laid out in the last phase and just wrap quartz stairs upside down all the way around it. And of course, uh, of course, right here is our is our center line. All right, now on top of that, you will notice we have more column bases. And the good news for these column bases is that, is that they sit directly on top of the column bases that you already constructed. So you see all these column bases down here that we made again? Well, if we just, we just follow that column up, we can see we have another one sitting directly on top of it. So just follow the pattern and build more column bases. Uh, you can see also for the floor, for the floor here, for the second level, we are no longer using the floor pattern down there with the glass. We have a different floor pattern to, for a little splash of color, we have some, I think this is blue glazed terracotta and black glazed terracotta, if I remember the block selections from part one. Um, but uh, th they're just in a checkerboard alternating pattern, you can see, and, and they're in no particular order. Um, I would encourage you to, a as you place these, these tend to place like, um, in other words, if they, they, since they have a pattern, they will place in the direction that you're facing. So if you place one there, and then you turn over here and place that one, you can see that, uh, well, that's a bad example. You, you, you can see uh, with, the, with these two here, they, have, uh, they will face in a, a different direction. You can see it more clearly with the blue. You can see these two blocks face that direction. But this one over here faces another direction. And that's because I was just, you know, I was turning around in random, uh, in random orientations as I place things. But like I said, if you want to have a different floor pattern up here, do feel free to make a modification. This is just one of my favorites that I like to use. Because I, I really like the, the, the rich dark color with, with um, uh, the blue and the black and the red on that one. It, it ties in with the lapis quite well. I think, and it's not uh, it's not too garish. It's sort of like a, a big Roman mosaic uh, floor up here. Uh, you can see on the interior here, damaged our center line, right there. Uh, I should mark that out. Of course, we have our center line here, and uh, I don't remember if I remarked or not, but of course you should have you should have three blocks separating these columns here for the doorway. This is the only place in the building that this occurs. Otherwise, that they're all, um, they are all two blocks apart. Uh, because uh, it's, just, it's just the way we had to, to work this out. Uh, because this building absolutely cannot get away with having a, 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 um, a double center line, so we have to make sure it's one. We have to space our columns out just a little bit more on uh, the middle here. And uh, this is actually something that ancient Roman buildings always do. If you see like an ancient Roman or even a modern uh, building with a Corinthian facade with the pillars, look very closely at it, and you will notice that the ones in the middle have more space uh, between them than the ones do at the edges. And uh, this was also done on the Parthenon and other buildings like that. It's too, uh, it was too correct an, an optical illusion. To, for, uh, for the building. Of course, uh, in Minecraft, though, we have much less resolution for placing blocks, so we have to, we have to make do. Uh, but the detail is still there in the building, so. All right, so I will just show you this entire floor sequence from the top down. 
we have another corridor here. That's a place directly on top of the other corridor that we built below. More columns here with their windows. The stairwell connecting to this level and the next level for the, th uh, the, um, the third level. The, uh, or, or rather the, the next stairwell leading up to the third level is what I mean to say. I can unjumble that. And of course I'm not counting out this level again because uh, everything you've done before from below there you can use that as a guide to construct this level because remember like I said all these columns sit directly on top of the ones above or rather below. Um, uh, now here there is going to be a slight guardrail we are using some quartz slabs right here so we can make sure that people don't fall off and you just want to extend those in between the, the uh, column bases and the wall like here and then just wrap them around like so here on the side uh, hemispheres couple there two there and one here right on top of our center line but that's going to be all the time we have for today i hope you are enjoying the roman cathedral tutorial thus far remember of course the world is available for download in the beta description so if anything i showed you was a little bit too unclear you can of course download the world and come here and take a look at all these phases for yourself so i want to thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time